Why, you right here, you think many fans prefer AEW despite the booking flaws? Because I would like to answer this question as well, but I will let you go first. All right. Well, the, the biggest thing is, and I used my stopwatch, I was Dave this week, and I timed how much wrestling is actually on these shows. And AEW has way more wrestling in two hours than Raw does in three and actually this week, and I did not count picture in picture. If AEW went to commercial with picture in picture, I stopped the clock because I don't watch it and I don't consider that part of the show. AEW had as much wrestling in the first 30 minutes of Dynamite. And this is bell to bell. Like if they're doing brawling before the bell or brawling after, I don't count that. Bell to bell match time. They had as much wrestling in the first 30 minutes of AEW as in the first 90 minutes of Raw. And I think that primarily is AEW's strength, that if you are a wrestling fan, you just get way, way, way more wrestling on AEW. And per minute, or sorry, per hour, AEW is giving you more than double the wrestling action per hour than raw does and there's just again uh aew loads up wrestling it's like you're two minutes into the show you got a wrestling match like all right we got some action here and they just deliver so much more actual wrestling matches and primarily they're good matches well yes uh that's obviously a big part of it if you're a wrestling fan you get more way more wrestling in aew but the thing my answer to this question, and I'm bringing this up because you wrote, despite many booking flaws, why wrestling fans prefer AEW. The booking in AEW is not perfect. And there are things on every show that I don't know what's going on. I question them. The ratings, the rankings have been big on my list of late. But the fact of the matter is, when they do their show... At no point when I watch that show, even if I disagree with a finish or a booking scenario or who's getting a title shot or how they did this finish or whatever, never do I feel that they have no respect for me as a fan. Whereas when I watch Raw and SmackDown, and not so much NXT, NXT, there are also a lot of things that I question about the booking. But I never really get mad about it. Like, I may get passionate about it because I want things to be better. But I don't really get mad. I don't really often watch NXT either and think that they don't have any respect for me as a fan. When I watch Raw and when I watch SmackDown, I feel that the person in charge, who is Vince McMahon, has no respect for me as a fan. He doesn't, he's gonna, he's gonna say there's a match coming and then he's either gonna do it or he's not. He doesn't care. He's gonna, he's gonna book matches and like, I saw the match last week. Well, we're just gonna do the match again. There's so many things when I watch that show where it's like, dude, why are you doing this to me as a fan? Like, well, why? I, I, you go ahead. I think you, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I think you also have a different perspective than the average fan in that, as a reporter, you cover all of the other aspects of the business, and I think you've established an opinion of their lack of respect for you as a fan and so forth, and I think your judgment would be different. I think if there was someone who wasn't reporting on the inner workings and knowing the different attitudes and stuff that goes behind it and knows that, you know, you've talked to Tony Khan and Tony Khan is really trying to make an effort to deliver and so forth, I think your opinion is a little... Um, based on information outside of the context of the actual minutes of the show. Because I, I think... No, because... Oh, let me give you a good example. I'll give you a good example. So I watch... I'm just going to use just the dumbest storyline that they're doing, but Randy Orton and The Fiend, okay? I hate this storyline. It's stupid, all right? Everybody does. But, like, dude, you burn The Fiend to a crisp. You burn him alive, he's dead. Okay, he comes back and they did that angle with Randy Orton where like Randy is going to light the guy on fire, but then he doesn't. He'd rather give him an RKO and then the Fiend doesn't sell the RKO at all. 
and he lays out Randy Orton. And then two weeks later, we have just a, a straight wrestling match with no stipulations, and Randy Orton hits the RKO he had two weeks earlier, and he pins the guy. Like, it's things like that where, as a fan, what? Yes, but He pinned to, the guy to... with one RKO. Yeah, I, I agree with you that that doesn't make sense. But on the other hand, I think you have a built-up intolerance for WWE where you have I do. a established acceptance for AEW. Because I will throw the other way that I saw Britt Baker get beat to a bloody pulp, pile driven through a table, and soundly defeated in the main event of Dynamite. And then the next week, I was treated like I was dumb enough to not realize that she lost the match because they brought her out and celebrated, and I never saw the winner again. So I think you can find examples in both shows that the booking makes no sense and feels insulting. And then again, after that big loss, she says she's going to become the number one contender. I never see her wrestle again until she comes out and says she's the number one contender. It's like you can find examples right, Lance, where but... the booking insults you. On both, on both, there is on any wrestling show. Okay, yes, you have an but established dislike here. of one company already. There is, there is a big difference here. Okay, and that is that. Yes, they had that match, and I have not seen Thunder Rosa since, except I think she did one taped interview. Okay, however, at the very least, they they booked that match as an unsanctioned match. Which means whatever you think about it, whatever you saw, like, then storyline, it didn't count, okay? It's a fucking That's number one. Right? It's a fucking cop. Whatever, but that's, whatever, but that's, that was what they announced. That's insulting. They didn't Why am I watching it a match a if it match. doesn't count? Then, then that's fine. If you don't want to watch an unsanctioned match, fine. But the rules in AEW have always been from day one that if it is an unsanctioned lights out match, it doesn't count. No, so they said it's it not doesn't like they count. No, match. Brian, Brian, this is important. It says it doesn't count on your record. It doesn't say the match yes. doesn't count. It's like when they no sanctioned a big brawl, the guy who won gets the further push, not the guy that loses. It's not like we're to ignore it. That is a cop out. No, but if I listen, I don't like the rankings as much as you don't. But if you're going by rankings and Britt Baker loses a match that doesn't count in the rankings, okay? And but listen, she, I've complained she was about it she, before. Brian, she was announced on the show as not being a number one contender and had to had needed to gain wins to become one. Never wrestled on the show and was declared the number one contender. I know she wrestled on the other Lance. show, but I don't watch that. But show. that's the point. At least they gave me that. I don't watch the other show either, and I would prefer if people built up their record on Dynamite. I've said that a million times. But they at least did that, okay? I would prefer if they did it another way, but they at least did that. Why did why did the Fiend no sell an RKO and then two weeks later sell the RKO and get pinned at WrestleMania? Why? They didn't give me an explanation. There's not some social media angle they shot. There's nothing. They just did it. There's a big difference. Let me say it again. I don't like that people rack up wins on a show that is on the internet. I don't like that. But they at least did it. That, to me, it's like, at least they're trying. I don't like it, but they're trying. When I watch Raw and they announce we're going to see a first-ever match between Randy Orton and Braun Strowman, and they promote it all weekend, and then they just don't do it, they're not trying. They didn't oh, beat up Braun Strowman backstage. They didn't beat up Randy Orton backstage. So that's the difference. They're not even trying. Yes, There's but plenty I, I... of stuff that I watch on AEW, and I don't like it. But at least I feel like they're trying. Yes, but I do believe that feeling is created because as a reporter, you've reported on WWE and you know for a fact they don't care. Which I think is a slight well, difference. Because yeah. again, I'm not endorsing either side in their their lack of booking details. But I think, and again, we've seen this with tribalism in wrestling. It's like WWE fans are willing to overlook the booking flaws, and AEW fans are willing to look overlook their booking flaws. And I think the biggest difference is one wrestling show actually has a shitload of wrestling on it, and the other wrestling show has almost none. Like I did percentages. It's like raw. Like, 
And again, the third hour was way more, but it's like the first two hours of Raw, it's like 20% of the show is wrestling. 80% of it isn't. And at the end of the day, like I calculated the minutes, and if you just count the, you know, 44 minutes per hour or whatever, and how many minutes of wrestling, it's like Raw delivered 30 pre 33% of their content was wrestling. AEW was 60. It's party time on the program today. I got our main man, Filthy Tom Lawler, here. We're going to have a celebration for you for your, for your epic victory here. Please sit down, Tom. What's going on? You are talking to the champ, baby. Yeah. The new Japan strongest. I got balloons for oh, you. Oh, yeah. Yes. There were no balloons. It said, congratulations, new New Japan strong open weight champion. So instead I got thinking of you and a cat. We're not going to be drinking here on Twitch. We're only going to have a shot. That doesn't count as drinking. The finest. The finest absinthe. A Brian size Diet Coke. Look at this thing. Yeah, this is this is a big one. Probably a little bit too big, but you know what? Let's do this. One, two, three. Ooh, man. Oh. The greatest mixed martial artist slash wrestler in figure four history, Thomas Lawler, the greatest Taurus that has ever been a champion in professional wrestling. The greatest Taurus? You know what I always do when we're done with calls? I hit this button. You know what it says? It says this. We are sorry, but the show has ended. Goodbye. This right here, my friend, this is Mini Zazu. He is the new show mascot. He's going to be sitting here. He's so proud of you for what you did over that weekend, Tom. Congratulations, Tom. Thanks, man. That's right. No tears on this show, Tom. Come on, buddy. There, Hold there, it together. Joy. You did a there, great there, job. Joy. We're all proud of you here. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.